uh, welcome uh, our topic for today's lecture is software security uh, here is the agenda for uh, today's lecture mm -hmm. and we'll be able to define and demonstrate understanding of memory organization buffer overflows and relevant countermeasures uh, we'll also list and define common programming bugs um, such as off by one errors race conditions and uh, incomplete mediation and the mm, explain methods of routing, writing code for security so we'll start with uh, the framework uh, for secure code development um, mm, it's um, uh, from OWASP uh, secure development guide SCD um, mm, because uh, building secure software requires a basic understanding of security principles so those principles are outlined those are the recommendations um, the purpose is security by design so um, these guidelines should be considered should be implemented while designing um, softwares while uh, during the software development um, the uh, the goal of the software security uh, overall uh, is to maintain confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the information. The three principles of CIA, uh, Triad, and uh, Parkerian Hazard model um, in order to enable successful business operations. Um, this goal of the, uh, the, the three components of the CIA is accomplished uh, through the implementation of security controls. Um, so here we will focus on the uh, technical controls in in these areas starting from the input validation to the uh, memory management um, so we will focus on those uh, technical controls um, in order to mitigate the occurrences of the common vulnerabilities in common software vulnerabilities um, the overall uh, it's it's um, the uh, it emphasizes uh, on software security and also on the web application the supporting infrastructure uh, but uh, these guidelines these principles uh, could be applied to um, any software development platform um, so first let's define um, the uh, uh, risk uh, in order to protect the business from unacceptable risk associated with its reliance on software it's important to understand and model risks we'll do a separate um, lecture on that one on the vulnerability analysis list analysis and there is also a separate lecture on the uh, lecture on the security controls but these guidelines specifically applies to uh, the software uh, security so risk uh, is a combination of factors that threaten the success of the business. This can be described conceptually as a um, threat agent um, that interacts with the system which may have vulnerability that could be exploited in order to cause an impact. So these are these uh, components threat agent interacting with system having vulnerability um, which leads to exploitation and the subsequent uh, impact or, or damage. Um, although the, the, this, this may seem like an abstract system, think of it in this way. Uh, let's assume a car a burglar which is a threat, threat agent goes through a parking checking cars uh, which is the systems uh, for unlocked doors, the vulnerabilities and once they find one, uh, they open the door, they exploit and take whatever is inside it. Uh, so that's the impact. So that's a good example. All of these factor, uh, all of these factors play a role in secure system, uh, secure software development. There, there is also a fundamental difference between the approach taken by a development team and that taken by someone attacking an application. Uh, a software development team typically approaches an application based on what it is intended to do. In other words, they are designing an application to perform specific tasks based on um, documented functional requirements and use cases. An attacker, on the other hand, is more interested in what an application can be made to do and operates on the principle that any action not specifically denied is allowed uh, to address this. Some additional elements need to be integrated uh, into the early stages of the software lifecycle. 
um, those new elements are security requirements and abuse cases. Um, so, so these guidelines uh, help uh, in, in to identify high level security requirements and uh, also address many common abuse uh, scenarios. So two, two fo it, it focuses on two components. One is on the security requirements and other is on the, mm, on the abuse cases. So for the software development, web development teams, it's vital, it's mm, important to understand that client side controls like client-based input validation, hidden fields, and um, interface controls uh, provide little, if any, security benefit. Um, as we discussed yesterday during the injection attack, um, an attacker can use tools like client-side proxies um, or uh, other tools, um, SQL queries or network packet captures to analyze application traffic and submit custom-built requests. Um, we saw that some, there are some blind injection attacks as well where either by the time uh, delay response or by using the boolean uh, response attackers were able to analyze uh, the, uh, the database server and able to um, uh, submit custom, uh, custom SQL queries and were able to obtain uh, detailed information on those blind type of attacks. Uh, so, um, so the uh, software security flaws um, can be introduced at any stage of the software development life cycle including so basically it relates from the uh, the from the, the initial requirement function identification all the way to implementation and patching uh, so those flaws uh, could be related to not identifying um, security requirements up front creating conceptual designs that have uh, logic errors using poor uh, poor coding practices that introduce technical vulnerabilities, uh, development and uh, deployment of the software improperly, uh, introducing flaws during maintenance or um, updation process. So it's important to understand that software vulnerabilities can have a scope beyond the software itself, depending on the nature of the software, the vulnerabilities and the supporting infrastructure, the impacts of a successful successful exploitation can include compromises to any um, aspect, um, um, for example, the software and so associated information, the operating system uh, of the associated servers, so which is beyond the software because software runs on the OS, the backend databases, other application in a shared environment, user system, other software that user interacts with. So all those have um, uh, exploitation which could impact the software security as well. Um, so the let's look at these um, uh, secure coding practices which should be followed. Uh, we will start uh, with the input validation first. So in the input validation, we briefly discuss input validation in regard to the um, SQLI, the SQL injection attacks, um, but we'll uh, review it today in the context of the software security development, software security. Um, so the input validation pertains to um, conduct all data validations on a trusted system, uh, for example, the server. It's also related to identify all data sources and classify them into trusted and untrusted validate all data from the untrusted sources, whether it's from database, file streams, and um, uh, the any other sources. Also, in regard to the input validation, uh, the there should be a centralized input validation routine for the application. Um, we should specify proper character sets, such as Unicode, UTF-8. All sources of the input should be taken into account, and we discussed yesterday that how to block certain type of characters um, encode data to a common character set before uh, validation. Um, all validation failures should result in input rejection. Uh, basically, if, the, if there is a validation uh, failure, that input should not be accepted um, at, the, in the, at the testing stage. Um, uh, determine if the system supports a particular type of um, uh, character set, for example, UTF-8 extended character set, and if it's it's supported, um, the uh, you need to validate after the decoding is complete. Uh, also, in the input validation, 
validate all client provider data before processing including parameters urls http headers cookies so so all the same concepts that we discussed yesterday uh, from the user input validation server variables http headers were part of those then we saw the second order attacks where the attacks were originating basically from the server itself we also discussed yesterday the cookies how to validate uh, them and the physical input so so the this is also related to this that for the software inputs you should also validate all those um, be sh sure to include automated post backs from the javascript flash or other embedded code uh, you also need to verify that headers uh, have header values in both request and response contains only the ascii characters validate data from the redirects um, we saw that the uh, that there was a third type of attack out of band attack in the sqli um, the uh, the where uh, the response was being redirected to a, a third party um, either through the http or dns so in this case the the if the data is coming from the redirects an attacker may submit malicious contents directly to the target of the redirect thus circumventing application logic and any validation performed before the redirect uh, so therefore um, it's very important to validate um, for uh, redirects um, also validate for expected data types uh, data range data length um, uh, all input against a white list of allowed characters whenever possible if any potential hazardous character must be allowed as input be sure that you implement additional controls like output encoding, secure task specific APIs, and accounting for the utilization of data throughout the application. So some of the common examples <coughs> of hazardous characters include um, percentage sign, add the rate of, um, comma, double commas, percentage, uh, less than sign, greater than sign, um, so, um, if you if you understand that um, the validation routines cannot address these inputs, uh, then uh, they should be um, uh, there should be separate routines to check them properly. So these are all the steps starting from the um, uh, the character set encoding, um, the client data processing, redirects, checking for length, uh, data types, range. Uh, white list so these are all recommended practices for the uh, mm, input validation so next uh, guidelines are related to output encoding output encoding um, so they, they, it should be conducted on a trusted system um, standard test routines for each outbound encoding uh, contextually output code all data returned to the client that originated outside the application trust boundary HTML entity encoding is an example. Um, encode all characters unless they are known to be safe for the, um, the intended interpreter and sanitize all the output um, of the untrusted data to the operating system and command. So these are some of the recommendations for the output. So most of them are related to the input validation as well. Next is the very important one. We, although we discussed some of these uh, recommendations uh, in the authentication part of this course, um, so the, those recommendations are same. I will just quickly review them and then we'll move on to the session management. So in terms of the authentication and password management, um, you should require authentication for all pages and resources except those specifically intended to be public. All authentication controls must be enforced on a trusted system. You should establish and utilize standard test word authentication services whenever possible. Use a centralized implementation for all authentication controls, including libraries that call external authentication services. Segregate authentication logic from the resource being requested and use redirection to and from the centralized authentication control. This is becoming a practice now, the centralized authentication control, particularly with the cloud. Uh, it's, it's recommended uh, that it should be separate from the resources if possible. Uh, mm, the, uh, the, if there is some failure in the control, they should fail securely. Mm, all administrative mm, and account management functions must be at least secure as the primary authentication um, mechanism. If your applications manage a credential store, it should ensure that the only cryptography strong one-way 
salted hashes of passwords are stored and that the table file that stores the stores the passwords and the keys is writable only by the application um, do not use the md5 algorithm as we discussed in the um, hashing those are not recommended uh, those should be avoided password hashing must be implemented on a trusted system validate the authentication data um, only on completion of all uh, input um, especially for sequential authentication implementation um, uh, utilize authentication for connections to external system that involve system information use only http post requests to transmit authentication credentials um, password entries should be obscured on the user screen on the web forms that use the input password uh, password reset um, uh, question should um, support uh, sufficiently random answers um, favorite book is a bad question uh, because there could be uh, some very common answers on that one. Um, if using email based resets, only send email to a pre registered address with the temporary link and passwords. Temporary passwords and links should be short expiration times, should have short expiration times. Enforce the changing of temporary passwords on the um, next use. Also, users should be re-authenticated prior to performing critical operations. Use multi-factor authentication for highly sensitive or high-value transactional accounts. If using third-party code for authentication, inspect the code carefully to ensure it's not affected by malicious code. So all these recommendations along with the recommendations which specifically apply to the authenticators and verifiers, um, those should be adopted into secure um, software development, secure coding approaches. Um, uh, of the overall system uh, development life cycles. Next is the session management. Um, so use the server or framework session management controls. The application should only recognize the session identifiers as valid. Uh, session identifiers uh, creation must always be done on the trusted system. Uh, session management controls um, should use well vetted algorithms that ensure sufficiently random session identifiers Set the domain and path for cookies containing authentication session identifiers to an appropriately restricted value for site. Logout functionality should be fully terminate. Um, should fully terminate the associated session or connecting, um, and it should be available for all pages protected by the authorization. Establish a session in activity timeout that uh, is as short as possible based on balancing risk, on business function requirements. In most cases, the, the session um, inactivity timeout should not be more than a uh, few hours. Now, disallow persistent logins and force uh, periodic session terminations even when the session is active. Um, if the session was established before login, close the session and establish a new session after a successful login, um, generate a new session identifier on any reauthorization. So um, set secure attributes for cookies transmitted over the TLS connections. And so these are some of the recommendations um, the, um, from, uh, which applies to the session management. Uh, for the access control, we, we, dis we have already discussed. So let's look at the main um, controls or main recommendations regarding the access control. Uh, so use only trusted system objects. Um, deny all access if the application cannot execute the configuration information. Uh, enforce authorization control on every request. Uh, segregate privileged logic from the other application code. Uh, the access should be restricted to the um, files or other sources, including those out the application direct control to only authorized users. Uh, the, it should also be restricted to protect URLs to only authorized user. Um, the protector functions, direct object reference, um, services, applications data, user and data attributes, other police information should always be restricted only to the authorized users. So these are the very important functions because the um, if the unauthorized users are able to access them, uh, they, it can impact the security of the application, it can impact the uh, security of the uh, data. Now let's look at the cryptographic practices. We already know what are the uh, don't, do's and don'ts of the cryptographic practices. Mm, uh, the all cryptographic function uh, used to protect secrets from the application user must be implemented on a trusted system. Master secrets should be protected from unauthorized access. Mm, 
in cryptographic module should fail securely all random numbers random file names random guids random string should be generated using the cryptographic module's approved random number generator as we discussed that the improper use of the random number generator um, can also lead to some vulnerabilities um, cryptographic um, uh, module used by the application should be compliance to fips uh, um, uh, 1402 nist standard or any other um, uh, equivalent standard um, there should be uh, established policy um, for how the keys will be management so key exchange and key management protocol should be um, established clearly so next is the error handling and logging um, the do not disclose sensitive information error responses so last yesterday we also discussed then the injection attacks the error uh, verbose more detailed mm, error uh, messages could uh, uh, mm, disclose a lot of thing about the system uh, including the uh, system details session identifiers or account information uh, use error handlers that do not display debugging or stack trace information implement generic error messages um, mm, that uh, that that application uh, uh, should uh, be pre-configured, or there should be some custom um, error uh, messages over there. Uh, the application should handle errors and uh, not rely on the server configuration uh, properly. Uh, I look um, uh, properly uh, me proper uh, memory allocation and deallocation should be done if there are some error conditions. Error handling logic associated with the security control should deny access by default um, and the logging control should support both success and failure as a specified uh, security events, log, all input validation, all authentication attempts, all failures, all access control failures, um, all tempering activities including unexpected changes to state data and um, all attempts to connect with invalid or expired session keys and system exception should also be logged. So again, in terms of the logging, the recommended, recommended practice apply to logging of the input validation, authentication, access control, uh, tampering, and the uh, system exception. So these must be logged in the, these are the recommended uh, um, uh, practices, uh, principles for the error handling and logging. Let's look at the uh, data protection, uh, which is next. At the least privilege principle should be implemented restrict users to only the functionality data and system information that is required to perform their tasks protect all cached or temporary copies of sensitive data stored on the server from unauthorized access and purge those temporary working files as soon as they are no longer required encrypt highly sensitive stored information like authentication verification data even on the server side um, um, server side source code uh, should be protected, um, um, passwords should not be stored um, um, improperly, uh, um, comments in the user accessible production code uh, must be removed, uh, do not include sensitive information in the HTTP GET, um, uh, the application should support the removal of sensitive data when data is no longer required and proper access control must be implemented on all sides. In terms of the um, communication security, um, the, uh, the comp comp implement encryption for all data communications. Um, this should include the TLS for protecting the connection and may be supplemented by discrete encryption of sensitive files. Um, so the certificates uh, should be valid. Um, failed TLS connection should not fall back to an insecure connection. Um, specify correct encoding uh, for all connections. Um, and the the filter parameters containing system information from the HTTP referral when linking to the external side. So these are some of the recommended uh, practice along with the other uh, database security um, procedures that we discussed in the database security lecture. They should be, uh, these are the recommended guidelines. In terms of the, um, uh, the configurations, uh, the database security we already discussed um, uh, yesterday, so almost those, all those principles applied over there. So we have a very detailed discussion on one lecture. We discussed the databases, database security in general, and then we also discussed the SQLI um, in much more detail. So, uh, so the, the those recommendations are same. Input validation is very important. 
um, you know, output coding, parameterized queries, properly farming structure, pre uh, the uh, the the blank holes are the pre so placeholder over there where the user input will be stored and so on. So these are some of the recommended practices in terms of the uh, database security. In file management. Mm -mm. Do not pass the user supply data directly to any, any any dynamic include function. Required authentication before allowing a file to be uploaded. Limit the type of files that could be uploaded. Uh, validate uploaded files mm, are that expected by type checking file headers. Checking for file type uh, is not sufficient. You should do a much more detailed mm, analysis. Um, prevent or restrict the uploading of any file that may be interpreted by a web server because that could be used to launch attacks and that should not be, be in any circumstances that should not be passed to the um, database server. Um, the safe uploading in Linux to Nix by mounting the target file directory as a logical drive. Um, do not pass directory or file path using text values mapped to the predefined list. Ensure application files and resources are uh, read only. In terms of the memory management, we'll discuss some of it today as well. Utilize input and output control for untrusted data. Double check the buffer is as large as specified um, when using functions that accept a number of bytes to copy such as string copy. Be aware that if the destination buffer size is equal to the source buffer size, uh, it may not null terminate. Check buffer boundaries, truncate all input strings to a reasonable length before passing them to a function and the, um, avoid the use of known uh, vulnerable functions such as, such as printf, string cat, um, string copy and so on. Properly free all allocated memory um, upon the completion of function. So these are the some of the specific recommendations in for starting from the input validation, authentication, access control, cryptography, data protection, network security, database security. So in this course we have been developed, we have been analyzing all of these. So all those recommendations apply, but these are we, we have specifically listed some of them. You see a lot of commonalities among them. So therefore, they, these are the general coding practices as well, which should be followed. So um, the use of tested and approved managed code rather than creating a new unmanaged code for common tasks, it's recommended to use the tested and managed code. The use of checksum and hashes to verify the integrity. Uh, to use a specific built APIs to conduct operating system tasks every operating system provides that mm, um, the locking to prevent multiple simultaneous requests you will discuss some of those concepts in the um, there are semaphores there are other uh, locks which should be utilized for a mutually exclusive access um, explicitly initialize all your variables and other data sources it's a very good programming practices so you will learn these practices in in uh, in some of the uh, programming languages courses as well and C courses in Java courses where you will see that don't pass the user supply data to any dynamic execution function users should be restricted from generating new code or um, altering the existing code so these are some of the good practices uh, will uh, so in the, we in, in this part of lecture we have discussed this framework and these recommendation in um, in the next part of this lecture we'll discuss some more details about the um, software security thanks